So, Adam Lambert, great to see you again. Thank you. Album number three. Yeah. Pressure's on. I feel like this is the one for me, though. This feels like, I don't know, it just feels like something clicked. It's simple as that. <laughs> well, you keep using this phrase, and you told me this phrase. Last year, you said it to me at the Brit Awards, where it was great to see you said it's more honest. I keep hearing this mm. phrase, honest. So yeah. explain that to me. Well, I think in the past, I, I definitely delved into material that was real silly and kind of theatrical, a bit more camp. Um, you know, I had my serious moments on these other albums, but this one overall has this cohesive kind of sound, and it's a little bit more grounded. Uh, it's not as showy. It's not as uh, it's not as ridiculous. It's a bit more real. It's rather brilliant, actually, as well. Well, thanks, thank it's, you. I mean, this is an album you can play, I think, before you go out mm-hmm. and whilst you are out. Yeah. When you come in, yeah, from going out. Yeah, it does have that. Yeah. Is that the plan? Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, the the title, the original high. Uh, you know, the the whole idea behind the album is sort of is kind of talking about this like chase that we are all on you know the chase for for pleasure really like what is it that makes you feel amazing and we're all no matter who you are everybody's motivated by that to some extent and it sometimes it's the thing that gets you up in the morning sometimes it's the thing that gets you out at night sometimes it's the thing that keeps you out at night sometimes it's the thing that gets you home at night (laughs) um yeah it's definitely uh it's definitely the running theme there on that and lyrically, did you enjoy just putting everything down on paper, telling your story, your personal story as well? I had a lot of like little notes. Yeah, a lot of I, I, I kind of go through life and make little notes and make little, you know, fr- I put little phrases down. And this album was definitely a team effort, a team experience. Um, I lived in Stockholm for two months and I worked on it there to start all these ideas and then finished it in L.A. But I came to the project with actually a demo called The Original High. So that was the thing that really started the whole ball rolling. And that, you put that track, the video for that's already online, isn't it? And your fans have been reacting, I think, to that. Uh, it's the audio. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Are you loving seeing the reaction to the track so far? Yeah, yeah. I mean, all the, the we've had four, I think, tracks come out ahead of the, uh, the release as, you know, like little bonus ideas for people so they can get a, a feel for it. And the, the response has been amazing. You do reference the nighttime quite a lot in this album. Oh, yeah. yeah. Well, I'm kind of a vampire. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, there's some, you know, some people are day people. Some people are night people. I, I, I get my best ideas and the most energy at night. So are we talking, what, f- at three, four in the morning, you're writing ideas? Sometimes. You being sometimes I'm a bit of an insomniac. Yeah. Yeah. This year alone, I mean, you've taken the world by storm, but yet again, by performing on stage to thousands of fans around the world with Queen. I saw you obviously here in the UK and London. Yeah. And those shows are just wow. And then there's Mr. May on the album on track called Lucy. Yeah. So that I, was, yeah. To, I don't even have to, have to ask you, how did that happen, Adam? <laughs> uh, well, I, you know, I, I was talking to him about the songs and I was playing him stuff and he was liking it. And, and I, I played him this song, Lucy, and there's a guitar bit on the original demo that's nowhere near what Brian does. And I said, you know, I, what do you think of this? And he was like, well, I have a couple ideas that would make that way better. <laughs> I said, I bet you do. So we got together in L.A. and he, he put it down and he put this guitar solo into it. And it, it's very signature Brian May, which I love. You wouldn't question that, would you? That refuse that Never. Offer. No, not you can't question Dr. May. We're that? friends. I mean, I feel like they're you know we're all a big family now. We've been on the road for for months, so we we got to know each other quite well. Um, I still have massive amounts of respect for him, of course, um, but I feel f- I feel comfortable with Brian and Roger. You know, they're they're my buds. You know, we're 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 a team when we get on stage together. And there is nobody else in the world right now who can sing those songs. I think they, you are the only man I can think of. Oh, well, thanks. Do it. There is no one else who can blow a crowd away with that. Well, thanks. So more, <laughs> it's more, been fun. More, more shows coming up? We have, uh, we have a couple more shows in South America in September. Um, and so far, right now, that's, that's all for now. Um, but you never know what the future holds. Uh, you know, if you have a crystal ball somewhere, maybe you would know what, what's happening next. I don't know. We'll find that right now. <laughs> um, there's also another artist on this album who's just blowing up the charts as well right now. Yeah, Tove Lo. Yes. Yeah. She's amazing. Um, when I got to Sweden, uh, the, the people that I started working with were a group of writers and producers called the Wolf Cousins. And she is signed to that, that group of, of writers. And we got together and got a kick out of each other right away. She's very down to earth, very cool. And uh, we started talking about being an artist or you know being in the business and then trying to maintain some sort of personal life and how the two things kind of are tricky to juggle but that the key is really finding somebody that really has a strong connection with you and then you got to tune out all the noise and all the bs are you struggling with that at the minute or is it all going well 
Um, well, I'm dating my album, so we're <laughs> and the original high does not complain, so uh, we're good. We're That's good. What you want yeah, to yeah. <laughs> um, what do you say? Two months in Sweden. Yeah, Recording two months. Yeah, it was in winter time, so it was it was cold well, and it was quite that, dark. Uh, that was my next question. Yeah. how do you cope with that? I think that I think that kind of led to the the kind of melancholy kind of moodiness on the album for sure. Yeah, a bit darker lyrically. Yeah, so. yeah. I, I wanted to write stuff that felt felt introspective, you know, that felt like kind of real, like like I said, real and 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 emotional. Um, you know, I I spent some time in L.A. before I started this whole thing, and. I had some time off and I was hanging out with friends and doing dinners and going out at night. And, uh, you know, I, I have a great circle of people that I know that I've known for years. And I was kind of asking them questions, sort of talk show host style one night. And I said, what, what is it that we all want? And no one really could answer the question. Everybody was like, I, I don't know. I actually don't know. I think I know, you know, and, and what we kind of identified was, well, we all want one thing or another. We want, we want love. We want success we want wealth we want power we want sex we want parties you know there's all these things that motivate everybody and I, with the original high with the title track it felt like we had nailed this idea of of looking back and being like well i just wanted to feel like how it felt the first time i tried this stuff and if it could just feel like the first time every time oh i'd be so happy that is the key isn't it yeah so there's a longing on the album in terms of what Adam Lambert wants now, yeah. looking back to the Adam Lambert that won American Idol, has it radically changed? I mean, I'm still the same guy, 100%. Um, I've definitely grown up a bit. I think I've learned a lot. I think I've um, gone through a couple different different like chapters in my career as far as sonically, like my music and my fashion, and, and also just personally, like what I know and what I've been through and some of the new friends I've made, some of the old friends that have come along for the ride. Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm in a different space for sure. Can we talk about how you always look amazing and what's the key to this? Uh, what's your <laughs> shed? What's the fitness regime? What's going on with you? Oh, it's I was, the promo schedule is like not that much sleep. So if that's what, uh, if that's the key, then just keep not sleeping. <laughs> but you still love the fashion side of it, the style side. And oh yeah, and style. I yeah. I love, style. I love fashion. Yeah, I, I have a shopping addiction. It's a problem. Yeah, yeah. That's an original high is buying shoes for me. <laughs> Do you own a ridiculous amount of that? It's, just, it's getting there. It's getting kind of grotesque. Um, you know, I, I start shopping online now, which is really trouble because you don't really have to try on. I, I don't really try on shoes before I buy them. I know that a size 11 or 44 for those listening and want to buy me some. Uh, I know what they feel like. So um, I can just go click, click and look at the 360 view of the shoe online and be like, yep, that's one for me. Have you ever bought a pair of shoes and never, never worn them? Just yes. Like that, yeah. Yes. Or I've I, every once in a while you do get a pair that feel awful. Especially when you're online, you can't really examine them physically. Word to the wise, be careful with the online shopping. Have you got any plans? <laughs> that is very good advice. Yeah, careful now. <laughs> Have you got any plans to uh, start your own chat show, Ellen Starley, after what you just told me about interviewing your friends? I want to see that show. Um, you know, my birthday is the same day as Oprah's. So maybe there's something in the stars. Maybe one of these days I'll have some sort of a, a chat show. Maybe someday. I could, I could see myself doing that later, later, yeah. later, later, later. It's all about the performance, it's all about the yeah. performance. There's too much later music. when I'm like, in a, you know, when I can't stand anymore. But so yeah. what George always says and says to me that you should always buy your own record on the day of release. Will you do that? I have pre-ordered my own record. So yes, it should be, it should have arrived. Yeah. In my inbox, in my, uh, on my purchased, uh, my iTunes. Yeah. You're proud of this one, aren't you? I'm really proud of it. I think, um, I think the other thing about it is not only is it cohesive, but it's one of those albums where I feel like every track is like a slam dunk as opposed to, you know, we all have album songs in the past where we're like, well, this one, this one's good, but it's, you know, it's not like my favorite. This one feels like I love every song. Like, you know, people ask me, what's your favorite? And I, I can't name a favorite. What's your favorite, Adam? <laughs> I literally can't. I mean, uh, the ones that weren't my favorites are the ones that didn't make the album. So Oh, don't tell me that. They're all my favorites. When are we songs. hearing those? No one's hearing them. Does it annoy you when tracks leak onto the internet before release? Uh, we, we've had really good luck with this. You know, it hasn't been too dramatic. So, yeah. Has Madonna reached out to you? Talk about Ghost Town, the brilliant single. No, but thankfully hers leaked, you know, <laughs> for, for me so that I could hear that she had a song called Ghost Town. Didn't change anything, but no, she's a, she's a big icon for me. I've I've grown up idolizing madonna i think she's amazing um she's a force and her song ghost town is a really great song she sounds her voice sounds great on it uh i found out that she was releasing a song called ghost town after mine was mastered and we've already chosen it as the lead single and i was like oh no okay and i took a deep breath and 
finally heard the song a couple weeks later and I thought, well, they're very different. So this should be fine. Whatever. Both different, both brilliant. She hasn't got a video directed by Hype. Yeah. I do have Hype Williams. She's got one by Jonas Ockerlin. I mean, they're both okay, icons. Yeah, they're both out. great. They're both great. But <laughs> yeah, the uh, but Hype Williams is amazing. And we had been talking for a while about doing something together. And finally, this song came up. And I felt like with the 90s influence on the track, I felt like, you know what? This would be great with Hype. And I got on the phone with him. And he was so excited and had all these ideas. So I do love, by the way, that sort of house, late 80s, early 90s vibe that is going on with some of these tracks. Yeah. Was that intentional? I mean, we're definitely. in that place right now, aren't we? And- yeah, I mean, it's definitely kind of a, a, a revival right now. And it, it, I was really excited to kind of hear all of the new versions of this 90s sound come back because it reminds me of the first time I heard dance music. I mean, I was, you know, a kid in the 90s hearing all these vocals for the first time, you know, all those soulful house vocals and great dance beats and that was a style of music that wasn't really necessarily being played around my house so I hadn't really heard it and it wasn't super mainstream on MTV but somehow I figured it out I I, I heard it somewhere and it, it it planted with me for for life I love it you can sing anything surely huh you can sorry I just got excited <laughs> you can sing anything though surely surely <laughs> Shirley Bassey surely don't talk about Shirley Bassey um, I love I like a lot of different kinds of music yeah and I felt like you know, in the past, I've definitely explored glam rock and the whole rock sound. And, and obviously, I've been on tour with Queen, which has been amazing, getting to perform like the quintessential glam rock songs. And with with this project, I wanted to do something else. You know, as an artist, I, I I've personally always like challenging myself to explore new things. It's your best album to date. I would say that it's the strongest. Yeah. And I think, too, um, you know, on a technical point of view, you know, as a singer, as a vocalist, I feel like. I'm really proud of the work done on it because it it pushed me into new territory vocally as well. I mean, Max and Shellback were were really interested in challenging me to try new things. Sing a little lower in this part of the song. Sing quieter here. Sing with this part of your voice instead of that, you know? And then I still get to do my signature wild, (laughs) crazy moments as well. So Summer's coming in. We don't have much of a summer here in the UK. What is your ideal summer? What do you get to do? What would you love to do? I hope that I can go somewhere tropical. I really like a tropical moment, you know, where you can get yourself, you know, a coconut, kick your kick your shoes off, put your toes in the sand and sunscreen and uh, yeah, a hammock maybe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Something tropical, that'd be nice. Sounds perfect. We're yeah. in festival season. Glastonbury's coming up. Are you going to go? Are you a fan? What do you think of Glastonbury Festival? I love these festivals. You know, I'd, uh, hopefully when you know when I'm making the rounds next year, I'll hit some of them. Kanye West is going to be there. Do you think he'll deliver a show? He's a he's a very interesting artist. I mean, he's got a lot of crazy crazy genius ideas. So we'll see what he does. Um, where do you want to be at the end of uh, 2015? End of 2015, um, hopefully I'll have some more music out there and uh, hopefully I'll have another video out there and hopefully I'll be talking to my team about touring yes, by what, the end of the year. What news on touring, yeah. Adam? What news? We, nothing's in place yet. You know, we've got we to gotta make the rounds first and share the music with everybody. And, you know, it's a, I'm lucky that it's an international release, so I get to go around the world and do that. And that takes a bit of time. So then uh, we'll see what, what the next year holds. Also interesting, I know you maybe you've been asked this before, but Idol is coming to an end. Yeah. We now know that. So Yes, I have been asked that. You have a few times. <laughs> Surprise. So let's think of a new spin on that. Um, do you think you'll appear on the final show? Um I've been asked that too. And yes, I think I might. Um I'm sure that I would love to go back and say hi for the final year. Yeah. I, I think uh I've been back every year since. So it's kind of a tradition a tradition. Uh, it's a tradition for me to to go back and visit and see all the familiar faces and meet the new ones and yeah, we'll see what they come back with. Your UK fans show you so much love. I see that simply on Twitter. If I write anything about you, bang, they're <laughs> outside the building. The Glamberts love you. What's the I message them. for them? I just love all the support. I love the the you know the loyalty. I love the passion that they have for everything that I do, and uh, they're really you know, they're, they're the ones that keep this thing alive. So, thank you, thank you, Glamberts. I love you. We love you, Adam Lambert. You're in a good place, aren't you? Yeah, things are good. Yeah, yeah. it's nice because you know this is you know all happening right now and never felt so calm about it all before i think in the past i was much more anxious and kind of nervous and worried and this time around i'm really like at peace with with feeling confident in in the in the product in the album so evil in the night i feel feel confident being evil in the night as <laughs> Another well the lonely yeah. night yes i love that one Underground. too yeah all on the album the these original are all, these are all my songs how did you know from mr adam lambert thank you adam <laughs> as ever thank you